All right, hello everyone. If you've seen the other two videos, you'll know what's coming. This is going to be the mage role for TOB learners. Now, this will carry on throughout just not learners, but standard raids and advanced raids. And this is more of an insight into what it's like during a mentor raid or during your early KC. Um, if you want to learn TOB, I've set up a Discord for it. The, des the description of the video will have it. Uh, the link there, or it'll be in the chat, or just anywhere you might find it. It might be on screen, I don't know. But have a look for it, join it, and we will teach you Tom. There's mentor raids going on every day, and if you do join, I recommend just being really proactive about what you want. Tell people you're ready to run, ask mentors if they're ready. Don't like ping them, but you know, just make it known that you want to do Tom, and players will come and help you. There's a lot of you now who have done TOA and are looking to try in chambers, or maybe you've done some chambers, but you're having a hard time finding an entry into TOB, and that's what this is for. Not affiliated with any clan or anything like that, it's just to teach people, get them an intro, foot in the door, and then give you some resources and where you can go post 10kc. So you can be 0kc, and all you need is the gear like this. Uh, you don't need ult or berserker rings fine, hearth is a bit much, but it's okay. Um, have a look at the discord, it's got learner setups, learner gear, learner everything, and just give it a go. Tom is a really amazing raid once you get to know it. Bit of a higher skill ceiling, bit more interesting, bit more punishing, but rewarding, is, rewarding in its own way. So um, definitely a fun raid to learn and never a better time. So uh, this is the third raid. Uh, this is the third video of three, and we did a range roll, melee roll, and now we're doing mage roll. The start of this video is going to consist of a south freeze POV, but I'm also going to at the end of maiden show a north freeze POV. I'm not going to do the entire raid, and you are not expected to north freeze as a learner. You might be expected to south freeze but North Freeze is usually taken by the helper or the mentor in the raid. Now, this is an example raid from the Discord, and we are not actually learners, I'm just cosplaying as one, and we have learner gear on to show you what it's like to go through this process as a learner. This is a walkthrough. So you might be asked to do South Freeze, and it's a fun role, but it's a role that carries responsibility. So we're going to put a bit more emphasis on the start of this raid, and then we're going to go through the rest of the raid exactly the same as the exactly the same as the other two videos, showcasing what to do roughly in each room and how you should handle things. If you're looking for an example of how to tank Verzik, I did some of that in the second video, the melee POV. But don't worry too much about tanking Verzik; it takes time, it's tricky, and you can always practice in entry mode. So, with all that being said, let's go in. You're going to see the south south freeze POV. And then afterwards, you're going to see the North Freeze POV and then the rest of the raid. So let's tell my team to get ready. Um, when you're actually doing this raid in the Discord, the mentor that is with you is going to guide you through the entire process. And you can ask any questions about what's going on or what you should do differently, but also keep an ear out and listen to them. This gear tab here and all the tile packs and all the resources and plugins can be found in the Discord as well. Um, this just allows you to gear up a bit quicker. I do recommend you try and make use of this kind of plugin and this kind of thing. I think I missed a brew, there we go. But it will help you gear up nice and quickly. So, let's go in. Now for Maiden, I'm going to give a bit of a pre-room knowledge. And that is that when we freeze, we're going to need our full switch on and augury. And when we do this, what we're going to do is we'll get ready for three sets of crabs. One is at 70, one is at 50, and one is at 30% Maiden. We want to be ready to freeze before the actual crabs come out. So... It's a pretty simple thing to do, you just got to get your timings right. South freeze is easier than north freeze, you have a window to mess up and that's okay. We're going to try and get S1, S2, and S4, or well, 4s anyway. Okay, let's go in. We start the room as normal, with two warhammers. I'm then going to switch into my range gear. There's one. There's two. Switch into my range gear and put rigor on. I'm going to move back and I'm freezing south, so I'm moving south. And now we're at 80%, I'm going to get ready to freeze. So augury on, mage gear on, and I'm just going to keep moving and stay around here and hover over this first tile and get ready. Just get ready, get ready, get ready, freeze immediately. And then second one, freeze immediately. Now you can freeze all four, but I just recommend trying to get the fourth stack, right click and roughly freeze them on the pillar, uh, freeze them in the stack. Once you've done this, you can DPS and you can continue. Now, in this video, I'm not really talking too much about the blood spawns. You can freeze them, by the way, if you want to. And then you can go back to your range gear and pipe them or pipe maiden. We want to DPS maiden as well, but these blood spawns can be annoying. Now, we're below 60 HP. Let's go back into our mage gear. Bear in mind, I'm not talking about dodging blood. You can look at the other videos for examples of that. And we're just going to look at the south spot here. Hover over it. It's not here. Let's freeze the next one instead. 
So sometimes the crab won't be there, especially in fours. Let's get ready to freeze the four stack. We're going to wait, wait, and freeze them in the stack. Great. But the idea behind dodging blood is pretty simple. If you move when Maiden moves, you'll dodge. It's a bit tricky to both juggle the idea of freezing while doing that, but it's very possible. Another blood spawn has, has appeared. You can if you want to. Do your switch and freeze. And let's put Augury on. We're getting close to 30%. And every time Maiden moves, I move. This is how we dodge blood. The other videos have better examples of this, and the freeze roll is a bit more complex. So, there's the crab. Those of restore, maybe. There's the next crab. And let's get ready to freeze fours, just in case. We're going to let them get to the front, and then go for them. So this is, not, this is not by any means perfect freezing, but it's good enough for learner raids, and the main thing is that you don't allow crabs into Maiden. Let's put our range here back on, and DPS. We can now ignore blood spawns, and so every time Maiden moves, I move. And the idea behind this is like, if she throws blood, like this, I've pre-moved out of the way of the blood. Now there's a lot of these spawns, so we have to dodge them as well, but that's the idea behind South Freeze. Quite simple. You're now going to see a POV of me doing North Freeze, which is all the crabs on the north side, all four. Uh, and then we're going to go continue this raid. Right, we're now going to do the North Freeze roll here. There's not much difference except we're trying to freeze all the crabs. We're going to freeze North 1, 2, 3, and 4. And uh, freezing 3 and 4 on time will allow us to freeze them in a stack. North 1 and 2 will not be in the stack, and that's completely fine. Ideally, your South Freezer will also back you up on 4s, but these are learner raid stuffs, so it can be a bit tricky. Maiden starts the same as before, drop something, and let's go do 2 Warhammers. North Freeze is the more important role in the entire run, because you have to be on time. If you're late, you can miss 1 or you can miss 2, but you need to get 3 and you need to get 4, otherwise there's going to be problems. So, let's get in. Start the same, 1 Warhammer. Two Warhammer. I'm going to run away and put Rigor on and Blowpipe. I've gone to the north side of the room this time, and I'm going to be very quick to switch into my Mage Gear when it hits 80%. There's 80%. Let's move for the blood, switch to my gear, and get ready for the first crab. I'm orientating carefully with my camera, and I've got Ice Barrage prepped. I'm hovering over this set of tiles, and go. There's no North 2, so what I'm going to do is get ready for North 3. I might be late on the exact timing, this is the correct timing, but just try and freeze them. If in doubt, freeze them early. And we're freezing them in order to try and get all of them, and then we're going to freeze the entire stack to DPS. The key here is to be prepared. It doesn't matter if you miss North 1 or North 2, North 3 and North 4 are more important. Um, but again, your South guy is going to back you up. Here comes the next set. There's one. There's two. And we just auto cast immediately. There's three. And as soon as you cast, cast on the next lot. And there's four. So it's really quite easy as long as you get the timing on the first one down. If all four crabs spawn, the timing is even easier as long as you're on tick. So here comes the next lot. Let's get ready. Hovering, hovering, hovering. One. Get ready for the next one. Two. There's no three. I can, I can demonstrate by freezing this one instead. That's my three in this case, but don't actually do that. And then there's your four. This is not meant to be a comprehensive guide, there are more resources in the Discord, it's just an example of what to do when you're freezing on north side. We can now go back into range gear and clean up some stuff. I'm going to try and dodge this blood and move around a bit, and click Maiden to finish up. So you've got three sets of crabs, and you are very very hyper-focused on freezing all of them. You have much less damage and much less stuff to do with Maiden, and you've got to be more careful with your pathing, make sure not to miss one and two, and then three and four should come pretty happily. Um, again, not a comprehensive guide, and you will not be expected to do this in learner raids unless you are hosting your own or you really just want to try it out. But um, there you go, let's get back to the rest of the raid. So, moving on. We're going to eat our anglerfish. Oh, I think he stole my anglerfish. I will grab that back. <laughs> if he has it. Okay, so he took my anglerfish, but that's fine. Usually pick it up over there. And for bloat, we're going to take anglerfish and salve, and we're going to move through. For bloat, you can dump 2x claw anytime. You can also start with a crystal halberd for one attack, and you can end hits with crystal halley as well. We're going to use whip for the most of the fight, and pray range and piety. Now, you can enter if you're careful on the timing, and depending on where bloat is, if he's like back here, you can enter. If he's at the front, don't enter. Your teammates might be in to start the room, that's okay. We're going to wait for him to go down and then enter. 
The lights on Bloat indicate whether he's getting up or going down. So if Bloat's at the back of the room, we can actually enter here. And he's gone down, which is what the lights are showing, so we can go and attack. We're quite late, so we're going to do four attacks. That's attack two. That's attack three. Chally here for the last hit. That's attack four. Let's run away. There is a correct side to stand on, and you'll learn this over time. I went back really early, but it's better to be safe than sorry. So in a learner raid, try and just be a little bit more careful about your supplies, your HP, your positioning, a bit of, you know, a bit of everything. Take some extra care. And um, now I've got tile marked bloat, by the way. Tile marked NPCs are really good. You can see them through the walls, so you know where they are. And I'm just trying to stay completely opposite bloat. Now my supplies, well, my uh, my pots have ticked down. I'm going to use a dose of super combat. Bloat has stopped. I'm going to go click it. And I'm quite late, so I'm going to do four attacks. Attack number two. Attack number three. Take a step back for the chally if you want, and I'm going to run. Again, this is safe than sorry. Five attacks would have been fine there, but I don't want to mess up, and I don't want to take damage. We're going to do a three down here, and that's completely fine. We're running through. Running through. I'm going to try and take a hand on purpose here to explain what happens if you do. I got hit. I'm going to brew and keep moving. Brew and keep moving. And that's completely fine. If you get hit in a bad spot, for example, if I'm over here, you start getting flied, that's fine. Brew and move. Brew and move. Brew and move. And you can use a load of supplies, and it's completely fine. Let's use a dose of Super Restore, and another one to get back our stats. And then we can use a dose of Super Combat here to finish up. So it doesn't matter if you take damage here, just make sure Brew and move. Right, let's go to Nilo. And again, your supplies are really just to be used. You need to use them, so don't be afraid. We're going to buy uh, one Stem and one Shark. Oh, um, before we do this, let's switch back to Torture and drop our Salve. This opens up a slot for us. Or it just means we can take an extra bit of food. And let's run through. I got my whip on right now, but we're going to be maging this room. So let's switch to our mage gear. And if you want to do takeoffs, you can take off like a defender or boots, but it doesn't really matter. I actually recommend keeping them on. It makes such a little bit of difference. Um, takeoffs overall, not a big deal. So let's go through. Now, Nilo has a preset uh, pattern to how things spawn and which ones are aggro and where they move. We can use Augury, or we can use Mystic Lore or Mystic Might in this room. It doesn't really matter all too much, but we have a lot of prayer bonus, a lot of a lot of super restores. So you can just leave Augury on for the entire time. The better your mage setup gets, the less Augury is going to matter, and you can even camp Piety or Rigor if you fancy on doing helping out with other styles. But for the remainder of this room, since we're mostly maging, let's just put Augury on. So what we're doing is we're clicking anything blue. You can learn what XP drop kills NPCs, uh, for example, 63 was not quite enough. For the small ones, 33 should be enough to kill it. Yeah. So every time I hit 33, I know I can click another one. 33, click another one. And you can get quite good at learning your XP drops to see what you can move and attack. There's a lot of green in the room, so let's switch to my range gear and help out with the green guys. And now there's a lot of mages coming in, so let's go back. Check, make sure our gear is good, and we can go and attack. There are, there are things called aggro spiders, aggro crabs, like this guy here, he's attacking us. If a crab is attacking you in the middle of the room, this guy is aggro, we need to clear them quickly. Notice how the team got rid of them very quickly. So if there's ever any blue aggro spiders, or aggro crabs, like this guy, he's coming towards us and attacking. This guy's a priority. I can also pray against him. We want to clear the aggros to prevent the team damage. And then we can go back to clicking crabs. Mage roll is fantastic, and I recommend while doing it, you stand in the middle of the room. This means that when crabs pop on the outer edges, you're not going to get hit. Now, whenever a big crab spawns, sorry, whenever a big crab dies, it's going to split into two smaller crabs, like this guy in here. These two splits are the only random things in the room. The rest of the room is more or less predetermined. Notice there's no blue, so I can try and maybe do some melee. Let's put some melee gear on and go and click some melee for a few seconds, just to help out. And we've cleared a couple. Okay, maybe click this big one. And then back into Mage Gear. For this role, you don't really need to use Stamina, so we're going to save it for Verzik. It doesn't hurt, however, to use one dose early on. May as well, you got loads. Let's also use some more prayer. We need to keep our prayer topped up. Two doses will be good. And let's go back to clicking Big Crabs. As a Major, you might be required to do a bit more freezing than other players. So when you get later into the waves, consider freezing the pillars if there's a lot of Nilos there, or if your pillar is looking low. You can also send out Ice Barrage to catch multiple crabs. Now there's a lot of big mages in the room, so I want to try and clear the aggros. Oh, my team should help and clear the range aggro. 
This one here should be attacked really soon. Should be. Sometimes this happens. It went blue, so now it's my job. Your teammate is not always going to do everything. If you're in learner raids, you have to take up the slack sometimes. So for that crab there, I saw it was aggro. Maybe I should have gone range and clicked it. I've got a lot of mages in the middle. Let's try and get rid of the aggro ones quickly. This is my job, so i got to focus on it. This one's gone melee, so it's not my job. Getting rid of the big one. I'm just splashing, but that's okay. I'm doing my job. And now there's a lot of Nylas on the pillars. So if I zoom out a little bit, I can send some barrages. Some other people are also sending. You can also blood barrage if you want HP. But I'm really just trying to finish up, freeze the pillars. You can throw out freezes much earlier as well if you want to. If there's lots of crabs, you can do it. This team is fairly competent, so it doesn't matter. Let's use some restore, go to my melee gear, and get ready for the boss. I can use a dose of super combat here and range potion. Here, I'm going to get two whip hits or two mage hits, maybe four, five, six pipe hits. And we do prayer first, offensive prayer, gear. Yeah. So get ready on your prayer book, melee pray, switch my gear, attack. I can use chally specs at the end of melees too. Range spray in my gear and off we go. So get ready, melee pray, melee gear, one whip and I can even do a chally and then go back to my whip. Bit of extra damage is really nice. And we're just keeping our prayer book open. Range, range gear, go. You can dump blowpipe specs, whatever you want to, just use some special attack. Mage pray. And just really hyper focus your prayer here. Whenever you uh whenever he changes style, you'll stop attacking him. So don't be afraid to just like do nothing. At, like if I just click my prayer, I'm not gonna keep meleeing him, for example. Okay, on to Satetsek. Satetsek for learners is pretty dangerous. Um it does a lot of damage, so you've got to be extra careful here. Don't be afraid to use a lot of supplies. And if you need to heal, take a step away from Satetseg and then heal up. You still need to try and flick your prayers and get them back on. So, you'll be assigned hammers, a role for hammers, like when to hammer, as well as a position to stand by the mentor. In this case, I'm just going to go hammer every first and second phase. And then I'm going to stand on one of these four tiles. In this case, I've got the southwest one. There's a ball coming beneath Satetseg and it's range. It's hit me. If I need a breather, step back and brew. Try and get my prayer back on. Got the range hit? Great. Let's use some super restore, some super combat, and go back and hit the boss. There's a mage orb coming for me, let's pray mage. These red ones are mage, these black ones are uh, range prey. When Satetsu attacks, he throws a singular orb that splits into two. So you can see. Let's wait for the next attack. Might get, might get the maze here though. There it is, this is split, this one's coming for me, this is mage. And we have the first maze. All we're going to do here is go to the center and then go and click red. So click red, click red, wait on the third tile for a second, your team should do this for you, and then we try and get off the start tile quite quickly, and then go slowly. Nice and slow, nice and slow. If you ever lag behind, try and follow your teammates. Just see where they're walking to, and they'll give you some time. Pray melee and piety, and do your warhammer if you have a warhammer roll for this phase, and then continue attacking. So let's have a look at Satetsuke's attacks. This attack here splits into two, a range and a mage. I've got the range. There's going to be another attack soon, but if it's a melee, not a big deal. He just melees you. You don't have to pray melee, although it will reduce the damage. I can also just pray mage, it's quite nice. The larger the team, the less you have to really worry about this stuff. And a big ball has been fired, so let's gather in the center. Use some more restore, and we skipped it, which is great. Same again, come to the center of the room, and then click on red. If your teammates make a mistake, just keep trying to follow the maze. If I'm like halfway through the maze or a bit further and it's going tits up, you can just run to the end. But, the, but for the most part, this is quite a fast maze as well, which is completely okay. Just click the red. You're not going to make a mistake. But uh, that would be a bit of a fast maze. He's uh, doing some speeding, which is fine. So back to your position. And then let's just see what's going on here. Where's the next split coming from? There's the first orb coming out. This one splits, it cannot split again, so it only splits once. There's the next one, and I've got a range prey. There's the next one, and I've got a mage prey. So you should try and track these. The tricky one is when it goes over on this side and it goes underneath the boss. This one's the tricky one to keep to see. So you've got some splits, I've got range prey. Got another split, I've got mage prey. And you'll get pretty good at this over time. 
So Tatsag, uh, it can kill you from like 80 HP pretty happily if you miss it or if you miss a prayer. So don't be afraid to just keep brewing like crazy if you get hit, but really, really try and focus on your prayers. Right, for the next bit, we can combine any potions that are left over and drop the remainder. And what I'm going to do here is sip a dose of ranging potion and drop that as well. We are going to be ranging in uh, uh, Zarpus. So I've got two, dose, two, two full super combats, a stamina potion, and I'd recommend getting anywhere from four to five restores. Four if you have good prayer, five if you have low prayer, uh, level I mean. So like 80, maybe four, sorry, 80, maybe five, uh, 92 plus, maybe four. I'm taking five because it doesn't really matter too much. And eight to nine brews. You want one piece of hard food as well. That can help you tank the green ball. If you get green balled, all you got to do is eat your combo food, get really high HP and stay away from Verzik. And then just keep eating after you get hit. Basically, it deals a big chunk of damage to you, and that's it. All right, let's drop this shark, make space for my blowpipe, and I'm going to get my special attack ready. So, Warhammer special attack ready to go for when the actual thing starts up. Because I was southwest on uh, Zetetseg, I'm responsible for the southwest quadrant over on Zarpus. If there's any exhumed in this area, they're mine to go for, like this one. Now, you can go into different areas. For example, this one is open. So maybe even the teammate will come and help me and I'll move over here. You don't have to stay in your area, but roughly matters. So over here, this is mine. And I can't get this one, so my teammate's going to come get it. And I can't get that one, so my teammate's going to come get it. So just kind of move around and help your team. And then when you're ready to start, when they stop spawning, redemption, piety, get close to Zarpus. One special attack. Two special attack, go to the corner. Straight to the corner and switch your gear to range and then put on rigor. We're going to click the boss and you can click the shadow for an easy click. The shadow is always okay. If you click the boss, sometimes you'll get pulled under a bit like that. You see the yellow click? Not great. If you get hit by this stuff, don't worry. It doesn't do too much damage. When you see it fired towards you, move. So we're waiting for it. It's going to fire towards us in a second. This one's not going to hit me, but this one from the boss. This is going to hit me, so let's move and click. We're going to try and do run movements like this across the entire room. And it doesn't matter which way you go. If you want to, you can double back on yourself like this. And you can move up this way. It doesn't really matter where you go. We're going to try and stick to the edge of the room as much as possible. There's the attack. Let's try and double back. You can always paint a nice picture if you fancy. And uh, when Zarpus has the screech above its head, we're going to stop doing anything. Let's move. There's more of these coming. Okay, there's the screech. Stop. Click the ground. Don't attack. Take your prayers off. Put your melee gear on. Put piety on. And uh, we're going to use these tiles around Zarpus. So if you go to the tile where he's looking at you, these two tiles, he can't look at them for the second turn. So he's going to turn elsewhere. So I'm going to go to where he's looking and attack from where he was looking. I'm going to go to where he's looking and then wait for him to turn. And then I can attack. If you do this correctly, you'll get two whip hits in every time. So there's my first whip it. It's, you know, it's going fast, but if you get in cycle, you get two whip hits. Getting one is good at least. Uh, don't rush it. Make sure you understand what I mean when I say like he's turning. So if you go to the position he's looking at, you can't get hit there again because he's turned away from that position. But if you go to a but he can turn like randomly. So be a bit careful. Again, there's two other videos just like this. If you want more examples, if you want more clarification, ask in the learner discord. So, we were southwest, we're going to drop some potions on the southwest area, and then we're going to get ready for Verzik. Your mentor may want you to drop a certain amount, just follow their instruction. Uh, these potions are for the team in case they want to carry you if you die. So, at this point your mentor may stop you and just ask you what's your experience, do you want any clarifications, what's going on? Tell them, give them some info, tell them what you're struggling with. They may tell you to train with a bit of the uh, Verzik P2 trainer. That's another useful tool in the Discord. But what we're going to be doing for Verzik is moving between these tiles here and in. These tiles and in. This is like our little set of four tiles. We can move around this area, but don't stray too far. So to start the fight, we're going to be praying Mage. If you look top left, we have an Orb Order and we are fourth, which means we have to be the fourth person to take the staff. So whoever has it is going to spec twice. So there's the first attack gone through, and the second attack, they drop it for the next person. And we're going to do four attacks on Verzik, then run back. And when Verzik claps, now is when we click. The clap is the click timing. Two attacks and run back. We're now going to take the staff. This is our staff, let's take it. Special attack one and two. And then go back to the pillar, switch to your whip, and drop it for the next person. 
wait for the clap, and go. We're just watching Verzik and only Verzik for this timing. Right click the ground and move if Stormbringer is there. Okay, get ready and go. Use the click, use the clap. And then back. We're going to watch for the clap and go. It's a really easy timing and you can actually click one tick earlier to make it go a bit earlier. The pillar went down so we're moving across now. There's the clap, we can go. With a whip your timing is like nice and free to get two hits in. And back. When, the, when it goes down, you don't want to be on the pillar. So be careful here and we'll see if it goes down. 0.2%, we're going to get it. So now get away from the pillar, spam click the center of the room, get away from the pillar. And now we're going to go to our position which is over here. We're going to pray range and piety. And to start this, maybe so those of super combat by the way, we're going to start moving around slowly. We want to dodge these crabs and you don't want to take damage. This is what we're trying to dodge. These guys. Get away from the crab, get away from the crab. Oh, I took some damage, let's brew. Brew and move, brew and move. Bit like bloat, brew and move. All right, brew, try and move, get stable. And then some super combat. And what we're going to do is we're going to attack in this little trio of uh, trio of tiles here. We're going to keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. And then whenever Verzik attacks, go and attack. Whenever Verzik attacks, go and attack. And you're just trying to watch for her movement. You just react to it, that's all you got to do. React to her movement and then move to the other tile. React and then move to the other tile. React and move. This process takes a lot of time to learn. Um, there's no easy way to do it other than, other than to practice. I'd recommend getting into entry mode, taking a really, really bad weapon with you, like flowers or just some fun weapon, and learning this timing on your own. It's okay to burn through supplies and you need to practice stuff like this. Tob won't come magically to you overnight. This is going to take multiple raids, multiple days to get good at, and that's okay. If you make a mistake, or you make the wrong move, let's say for example I'm here but I get bounced, just brew, there's nothing you can do. Make sure your range prays on, you take one hit and then start moving. Start moving, start moving, start moving, get stable, keep brewing, basically just brew and move, brew and move, bit of restore, super combat, get back to these two tiles and get ready for the attack, and go, and then back around. We're using these three tiles here and moving to alternate ones, because if you stay on the same tile and attack and move back, but she throws an attack here, you might get hit. That's all. When you get really good at top, you might be able to stay in and move out for the attack timing like this. This is like a bit of a more advanced timing. But for now you want to stay safe, which means you're going to do something like this. In and out, alternating these tiles. This crab can get in your way. If he does that, use these two tiles. We're going to do two hits on every red crab, and by the way, you should be praying mage for this phase. Two hits per crab, maybe three, and then back to your tiles. Get ready, in and out. Get ready, in and out. This process repeats until we whittle down Verzix HP, and we go into P3. Again, if you want a tanking example, the last video, uh, the melee perspective will have a little bit of tanking in it. You're not expected to tank uh, really at all, so just be aware. As a learner, your teammates will take it off you, and you just have to DPS and get your prayers right and not get hit by NATOs. Right, we're into P3. Make sure you have good supplies and good HP and everything. You can move your pots up and get them in a nice position. And I'm tanking it again. So this time I'm going to run away. What I'm going to do is wait for Verzik's attack, and then click her. Wait a second, and move away. Wait for the attack, click her. Wait a second, and move away. Wait for the attack, click her. Wait a second, and move away. There's the attack, wait a second, move away. There's the attack, wait a second, move away. I know it's silly and repetitive, but that's just how this works. You can also get the attack, wait a second, and move under. There's the attack, wait a second, and move under. This timing takes some getting used to, and there are even better methods of tanking, more precise methods of tanking. To run webs, you do an attack and wait a second and then run. This is not obvious, um, I didn't really wait the tick here because I was late anyway, but I just want to display this. If you don't have the uh, right timing, you can do this, you can run around, you can Tebow or you can uh, use a uh, mage weapon, and you just run around clockwise or anti-clockwise and deal damage to the boss. Now I need to get back here after webs, might take a melee here, and that's okay. I'm just going to brew, I'm going to run away. Brew and run away, brew and run away. Also, Verzik is getting close to 20%, so what I'm going to do is keep moving. So, there's the attack, wait a second, and run away. There's the attack, wait a second, and run away. And now we're going to get yellows, I'm going to take the closest one, this is fine. 
And I'm going to use more supplies to get to full HP. Using more restore. Using more super combat. Let's do one attack, wait a second, and run away. If you're close, you can get away with that. Okay, now we have nados. Let's just run, run, run. I got hit, let's combo eat. And just run. Run like crazy. Want to get away from Verzik? I can do one attack here after she attacks me, and then i got to run away. One attack, and then run away. At this point, I'm going to try and round the corner. Let's just wait for her to do an attack. And now we can attack her, and then run away. And it's dead. So on raids like this, um, the major thing is run away. I healed the boss once, and that's completely fine. But try and minimize the amount you heal. It matters a lot more with actual learner groups. No perps for our endeavors, and that's unfortunate, but that's how it goes. So this was a mage POV. It contained South Mage Freeze and uh, North Mage Freeze. And um, that's the set of three. So hopefully you've taken something away from this. And again, just join the Discord, get involved, and give it a go, really. The more you do this, the more learner raids you go on. Even if you're failing a lot of them, the more experience you get. And eventually you'll get to a stage where you can carry your own weight. And if you do that, then you'll be a certified topper. And it really is just about building your own team, finding a place to go, and doing more raids. So um, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. And that's more or less it for the top stuff. Check out the Discord and I'll see you guys there.